You know, Horse Soldiers, you may have heard that title. It's the New York Times number one bestseller about a band of special forces soldiers who snuck into Afghanistan on horseback to fight the Taliban after 9-11. It put Michigan author Doug Stanton in the spotlight. Yeah, such a compelling story. It was actually turned into a hit movie called 12 Strong, produced by Jerry Bruckheimer, starring Chris Hemsworth. And in the meantime, Doug Stanton just kept writing, releasing two other books in harm's way and the Odyssey of Echo Company. We are lucky enough to have him here this morning because he's hosting a lecture tonight at the Gerald R. Ford Presidential Museum. Doug, thanks so much for being with us. Good morning, Bye, thank buddy. you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Man, what was it like to see that I mean, for an author to see your work turned into something shown to millions on the big screen, I mean, that, what, what did that feel like? Oh, it, it was a, 10 years in the making and a dream come true. Every book needs its own movie, i got to <laughs> tell you. You know, the book ended up staying number one at the Times list for three months in a row, but it, it's a dramatic story of what we did in Afghanistan in 2001, and I think people are really curious, and I've just updated the book recently to catch up because, as we know, the world changed a lot in the last couple of years Boy, in Afghanistan. Sure did. So. Absolutely. And, and talk a little bit about the research that goes into writing something like that. How long it takes to go and, and really learn what happened. I mean, this is a true story. So I interviewed just about every person on the ground in Afghanistan that went there in 2001, right after 9-11. Let's just say it's 12 people, a dozen, are tasked with going into Afghanistan and finding the Taliban. And they succeed in six to eight weeks, what the Pentagon thought might take two years. So now when we look back, we think, what? What happened? But the book really talks about how, that, how it did work. I went there twice. Um, uh, now there's a statue um, in New York City called the Horse Soldier Statue. And the weird thing is, is my editor, Colin Harrison at Scribner, came up with the title Horse Soldiers, and now these guys have kind of adopted that as their own moniker. And just thinking, I'm sitting in my desk in Traverse City, Michigan, coming up with this <laughs> wow. title that now has this. But that's the power of the written word. When you, we live in a world of where we hear about laser-focused unmanned drones that, <laughs> that can do all of this stuff, people wouldn't even dream of horseback. They're on horses because that's how the locals were fighting the Taliban when they arrived. And so they, they adapted very quickly to this. Um, and I'll be talking about that tonight at the, at the Ford Museum about um, just how we affected that victory and where we are today. And so talk a little bit about In Harm's Way as well. I mean, you've got a couple other books that you're going to be discussing tonight. Right. And, and really a lot of just war themes, kind of. Is, is war your... themes, but I think it's really, uh, Michelle, about relationships. So these, these are books about how you and I relate to each other and we're trying to problem solve. In Afghanistan, there was a certain way to do that that didn't involve blowing things up, which is kind of the fascinating part of the movie, and, uh, of the book, and you see it in the movie. In Harm's Way is the story that we all know from Jaws. The famous monologue that Quint delivers Remember, I delivered the bomb, and Richard Dreyfuss goes, you were on the Indianapolis? Well, that, he, that captain in, Sh in Jaws is a fictional survivor of this real World War II naval ship. And so the boat did sink. They were attacked by sharks. They did deliver the atomic bomb to Tinian Island, which was then dropped in, in Japan. And they did survive. And so it's a story of their survival, about how they related to one another in the water and came through. And I'll speak about that tonight. About it's really a book about citizenship and community. You and I all have something common in common here if we're going to survive this moment. And what is tonight going to look like? Uh, will there be a reading? Is it just a strict Q&A? How well, what's the format look I like? I might show a video of my taken from my third book, Odyssey of Echo Company. When I went back to Vietnam with one of the main people in the book and we met his former adversary enemy who shot him on the battlefield. Wow. And it's a book really about a journey that Stan Parker makes from a young man in Indiana, now an older man going back to Vietnam. So I might show that video and I'll talk about horse soldiers and perhaps show the movie trailer. So it's, it's really um, a look at what we've been through in the last 20 years. Wow. Talk briefly about, you know, how you find these stories. I mean, you find these, the, these are yeah. true events that happen, but how do you find the one that makes the great book? That's a really hard thing to do. Um, I'm looking for new ideas right now and I'm looking at one uh, and I just don't think it's going to work. So I have this other idea, a true crime story actually, something totally new for me. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I have a good relationship with the editor and I, you really have to get down and say, can I get to know this person? Is there enough material there that I can recreate? A, my job is to make you feel 
that you know this person as an ordinary human being who then does something extraordinary. You know, Doug, I gotta, I gotta be honest, at a dinner party, you're the guy to find, right? <laughs> no you've doubt. You've got stories, you've got interesting conversation. I mean, the word I keep thinking in my head is fascinating. You find <laughs> well, all these you. fascinating stories uh, that I just want to dig deeper in, and you can, and you can do that yeah. tonight, actually, at the museum. So we want to get you there. Uh, come see the author, Doug Stanton. Uh, it'll be a fascinating evening, as you can tell, just in the few minutes that we've had here. Gerald R. Ford Presidential Museum, 6 o'clock tonight. It's absolutely free. You want more information? Ford Library Museum. Dot gov.